our stories are so, you know, and Jam's right in hers. Um, it's the welfare title, right? It's Porn Star and Welfare. Love that title. <laughs> so you guys need to read our books. But anyways, we're going to answer a couple more questions, and then I'm going to bring the ex-porn stars up here because I want to show you the glory of God. Ever since I was six years old, God told me, you're going to show the world my glory. And that is the most important thing in my life. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to fight porn. I want to be a gardener. I love gardening. I don't want to do this. But one thing I want to do is I want to show and demonstrate the power of God through Jesus Christ, his son, and that every word and the word of God is absolutely true, even if it's in the English translation. I prefer the Hebrew. It's all still anointed and on fire. I'm telling you, nobody has wrestled with God um, like I have. She talked about how we're like business people. Well, I was a barterer. I was a prostitute. And, I, and when I went and God put me in recovery, I'm like, hey, you give me this, I give you this, you give me this, I give you this. Okay, we got to make it. And God says, test me. All right, he says, if I give, and, I, and then you, if I give back, then you give me this. And if I do what Joshua 1 8 says, and that if I um, meditate on your word day and night, that I will be prosperous and successful in everything I do. If I give to the poor, I won't lack. If I walk in love, love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it rejoices the truth. Love never fails. You want to fail proof your life, Shelly? Then you do that. I do this. You do verses four through seven, you get, you get eight. So I would take that Bible and tear it up. Nobody has torn up the word like I have. I now have a doctorate in theology, and it's not because I need a title. It's because I really, really am really weird. I love God's word. I have over, what, 30 translations of God's word in my house, at least, and that's not including my electronic uh, on my, I have my, in fact, I have to have a Hebrew Bible now because I can't really read the English Bible anymore. God is the Aleph and the Tav. I know you know this the first and the last. Every Hebrew, e every Hebrew letter has a perfect picture to it and a meaning. In fact, Yahweh's name is basically, it's so cool, I love Hebrew. I won't go too deep in this, but go study the Hebrew. And, I, and if you want some resources, ask me and Garrett. But the name of God literally means arm revealed, nail revealed. The strong arm of God is revealed through the nail that is revealed. That is what the Hebrew is for Yahweh. And remember I told you his name is Yahweh, the breath of life. It's beautiful. I study the Hebrew and I'm addicted and I'm totally going to learn the language. And I bet next year we could tell her testimonies in Hebrew. <laughs> and I want to go to um, Israel because they have prostitution there. I'm like, no, God, I'll so go. I'll so go there. But the Jews are like, why are we going to listen to you, right? So anyways, we're trying to learn the Hebrew culture and... It, I'm just saying that the word of God is so beautiful. And of course, there's different levels of learning. I started out learning like Romans 12, renew your mind and be transformed. A lot of porn addicts ask me, how do I heal, Shelly? How do I have a porn addiction? I'm like, the same way I did. You pour in the word of God. And if you can't read it at first, because I don't know about you, but I couldn't read the word of God very well at first. My grammar was pretty terrible. My reading skills were terrible. I had all D's in high school and even F's. I don't know how I graduated. So I had to hear it. I had to, he I had to go to a good teacher. And um, we came to this great teacher and he taught me wisdom. Like, is your, half, if you're, is your glass half full or, or half empty? And I'm like, you are what you think, Jesus said. Jesus said, as a man thinks, so is he. And I'm like, well, I think I'm a whore. I think I'm horrible. I'm unlovable. I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm stupid. And nobody loves me. Well, no wonder. I live the way I think. So he challenged me. The pastor said, I want you to start looking in the mirror and saying, I love you, Shelly. No way. I can't do that, God. None of us could. And God says, do it anyways. So I would be like, well, you know, like, I kind of love you and stuff. It was an eight-year-long healing, what I had to go through and what all of us have had to go through. We had to learn to love ourselves, to 
the way that God does. The pastor would say, if God said it, you believe it, it's yours. And I'm like, God says he loves me. And God says in Isaiah 57 that he's a high and lofty God, and he hangs out with the broken heart and the contrite spirit. I'm like, that would be me. <laughs> and when I fell, and I did, you know, I, but I was so wholehearted about healing, but, you know, I would show up to church, and I'd be drunk bringing my kids in a stroller. And I would go up for prayer and feel so ashamed and horrible. And the Lord would say, you've got to come back. You've got to come back, Shelly. Wipe the dirt off. When you fall, wipe the dirt off. Get back up. Keep going, keep going. You're a champion. I've made you a champion. You will overcome because you're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I paid the price for you, Shelly, so you could afford that time to learn and grow in him. Because they were like, repent overnight. I'm like, mm, no, that's not going to happen. The whole, no, eight years. Repent actually means to turn away from sin and turn towards God. So the turning period is different for everybody, but for me it was literally eight years. I was turning. And that's why I tell people who are addicted to pornography or if you have problems with homosexuality or any sexual sin, which is very serious, I want you to understand that sexual sin is very serious. It's the only sin that you do that you hurt your own body. You actually separate yourself from the body of Christ, which is very serious. And, you know, I wish I could tell you all day long how much Jesus loves you and it's okay what you do. I can't do that. But what I can tell you is that, you know, the Old Testament especially talks about how the Lord seeks and searches for a heart perfectly after his, his. To and fro, he's looking, who's after me? Who wants me? Oh my gosh, that ex-porn star who's drunk on Jack Daniels, she's the one praying to me. Do you know that every single day I was in the sex industry for eight years I prayed? Every day. Many of us did. And he heard the prayers of a prostitute. And I made him a promise. I said, if you'll just get me out of this, I'll serve you my whole life. I promise. If you'll just get me out of this, I'll serve you with my whole life. I promise. I hate my life. I tried to commit suicide so many times and God wouldn't let me die so it was even worse for me. I have the slits and the scars on my wrists. You can look at both of them. I'm almost like Jesus. <laughs> Finally, he rescued me and I don't have time to go into it, but it's a beautiful rescue and my husband, um, he's a pastor's son and <laughs> God sent me Garrett to love me. He was the first man that ever um, talked to my eyes, my face. All the men talked to my body parts. And Garrett was like, God said I'm supposed to marry you. And he was so sweet, he would come to my apartment. And I was such a filthy pig. I'm sorry, but porn stars and prostitutes, we don't clean house right. at all. In fact, I was so spoiled by sugar daddies, they bought me new clothes every day. I didn't like wash clothes. It's a crazy lifestyle. <laughs> Garrett would come over and he would bring a big box of rags because he's Dutch and his mother is <laughs> a Dutch housekeeper. And he'd be like, show at my door. I'm like, what are you doing here? I told you you can't come here unless you call me. There's tricks that got to come here. <laughs> Don't be doing that. He's like, Shelly, your house is really dirty. I came to clean it. And he would literally, wow. he, would <laughs> he cleaned my whole apartment, the pile of dishes that sat there for two weeks. He brought all these box with white rags. <laughs> And he would just clean the apartment. And he didn't want me sexually. He just, he just wanted to be Jesus to me. The first person in my life. 
who had been Jesus to me. Well, anyways, I married the guy, <laughs> which is a really smart move on my part, and now we've been married 18 years. So you'll have to read the book, and it's really romantic. I get really into it. Like I try to push him away. I try to like tempt him sexually. You know you just want me. And he's like, um, put your clothes back on, please. <laughs> he was so pure. He really like, no man ever said that to me. So you got to read our book. It's really romantic, and there's some videos on my YouTube. But my, my thing is that the Lord is very compassionate, and what I love about him is as you read all four Gospels, you will always see that Christ heal people and he had compassion on them all all and they didn't have to go I'm gonna stop smoking first I'm gonna stop doing the porn thing first I'm gonna stop viewing porn I'm gonna stop being a porn star not that those things aren't serious they are serious but the Lord says no let me love you and touch you first and that's what pink cross is about we are like we just want to touch you and love you and heal you and that love will motivate you to want to go into recovery and healing and that's what we're about and that's why today there are a huge group of ex-porn stars in fact we're the world's largest group of ex-porn stars because this whole ministry is built on the compassion and the powerful love of Jesus Christ and I just want to invite any of you who are watching and those we're gonna pray I'm gonna pray but first, I want to show off the glory of God. I actually want to call all of the ex-porn stars up here to show people that Jesus Christ is real and he's the only answer. It's not Buddha. It's not Allah. It's not what other gods we got. I don't even know your gods because I'm, you know, they don't even. Our God, though, I mean, you're never going to see more people redeemed from the the grip of pornography, which we know is so strong, than our group of ex porn stars. Come up here. I want you guys to show off the glory of God through Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. And this is just a few of us. There's more. There's more. All right. Let me see. Oh, this is pretty. Look at that. Aw. Our newest one is Morgan, and we have Jenna. We have Joseph, come here, Joseph, get over here, we're gonna take pictures, so go over here. I want you guys to see the glory of God. Every single person here has be, been redeemed by the power of Jesus Christ, no other God. There is no other God. All right, say your name. Penny. Penny, uh, Michelle. Dan. Jenna. Morgan. Joseph. Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of J's around here. <laughs> and our, even, our Pink Cross is even bigger than this. We have other wonderful people but I just wanted to show you um, what Jesus Christ has done in all their lives and that they're full of power. Amen. We're not people who are like, oh, you know, we're full of power. Not perfect, but full of power. And so you can be that too, and you can be that, and you can be that. There's nothing impossible with God. Literally, God has proven himself to these people, and I ask you right now if you'd all stretch your hands out to them. I really want you to pray over them. These people are literally giving up their lives to be courageous to help the whole world. So I'm going to pray. And you just lay your hands on them. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless every single person here who's courageous to speak out on your behalf for your glory and to heal the whole world of pornography and to be a light in a very dark place. I ask you that every person here be filled with the Holy Spirit and that you would give them the desires of their heart, that you would provide finances for them to have a ministry, that you would provide all their needs so they can continue to go out into the earth and get that and reap that last harvest. Whatever it is they need, Lord, I ask you to provide that. I ask you to bless them. I ask you to continue to heal them as they continue in recovery. I speak boldness in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua, be bold. For you are witnesses unto me, says the Lord. I have called you for such a time as this, and no man can stop you. No man can close the door on you. I speak open doors. I speak the favor of God over your life, that everywhere you go, there'll be favor. In fact, those of you who have full-time jobs, I command them to be gone, that you are full-time ministers, that the Lord would provide for you, because this is the largest group in the world that is going to stand up and tell the truth about porn. 
and that will heal your church. So I anoint every person here with the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh, in the name of Yahweh, I send you out. Be made whole, be powerful, and be provided for. You should not worry about anything, but you shall go forth, and you shall be like calves coming out of a stall. You should be powerful. You will go through the valley of death, and it will be nothing to you. You will be a powerful voice for God in this world. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. amen. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. What we want to do now is we'd like the worship team to come on, turn off, I like the lights to go down, I like intimacy. We're going to get intimate. And also, I would like to honor the husbands, too. Get up here, Carlos <laughs> and Garrett. Carlos, he supports his wife in everything she does. I got to marry them in my backyard. It was really cool. It was really cool. And I want to honor my husband. Thank you. <laughs> I would never be here. Pink Cross wouldn't be here. And all of these people gathered together would not be here without Garrett. And I want to thank the rest of my Pink Cross team, Heather, Veronica, Greg, <laughs> Jessica, my baby, Megan, and all of you who support Pink Cross. Thank you so much because without your prayers and support and even financial support, we wouldn't be here right now. No way. So thank you. We love you. So I guess we're going to start praying. I just wanted to say this too, all of you guys, I want to give you a scholarship to the college. One of the young ladies, I forget who, who's the one that didn't graduate high school? You know what? Guess what? In, in uh, this state of California, you can go to college, you don't have to graduate high school. So you can get your college degree. So we can talk about that later, though. So, um, anyways, we're going to say goodbye to our uh, video audience. Thank you guys for joining uh, across the world. We really appreciate and um, we hope that uh, you've been touched, informed, and the truth um, uh, resonates in your life. So, um, we just want to take this opportunity now to cultivate an environment of wanting to um, be ministered to. So, uh, we're here. Um, we're always willing to pray. Um, I'll be honest with you. Nothing surprises Shelly and myself, and I think the rest of the Pink Cross team. Most of us have been there, done that, so we've had pedophiles fall in our arms. It, do, it doesn't matter, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 